Hey, hey, hey. Happy Monday. Welcome to Money Monday. We're going to have a good time tonight. Come on in. Um, I'm your money best friend, Nakia. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes. Uh, let's give everyone an opportunity to hop on. So come on in tonight for Money Monday. We're going to be talking about forecasting, what that looks like, how to do it. Um, I'm going to give you some great tools that will help you on your path. So let's get started. Um, it's nine o'clock. We'll wait to 901 and then we'll hop right in. OK, and of course, I, I have my notes. I have a new notepad because I told you guys last week um, we ran out of room in the old one. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started very soon. So let's give people about 30 more seconds for them to hop on. And while, while, while they do that, I'll just peruse my notes here. OK. Hey, Pat. Welcome to Money Monday. Thanks for joining. As always, who else do we have on here? Hey, Carla. Carla's my mom, if you guys didn't know. Welcome to Money Monday. Thanks for joining. Okay. All right. It's 901. Let's go ahead and get started. And as always, people can jump in as they can or they can watch the replay. Um, tonight for Money Monday, we're going to be talking about forecasting. No, I am not talking about the weather. I'm not talking about when is rain coming. I'm talking about money forecasting, which is very important um, while you're on your money journey. If you're talking about um, budgeting, so on and so forth. OK, so money forecasting. What is it? Right. What does it look like? Like, what is this thing? It's a prediction. It's an estimate. It's a calculation. You're foreseeing into the future. Hey, Candy, welcome to Money Monday. Um, it's it's planning your money out for the next couple months, the next couple weeks, the next year or so, so that you can live the lifestyle that you want to live. Okay. Now, most people, they don't forecast or they don't do it on purpose. And what I mean when I say that is they, they know things are coming, right? But they're not really developing a plan of what that looks like. They're not planning for it. Um, they're not really putting into any thought or anticipation into it. That's why you'll have people, Hey Tash, welcome to money Monday. Um, that's why you have people who know Christmas is coming every single year. It's the same day every single year and they don't have a plan, right? They're scrambling for gifts and it's because they don't forecast their money. Okay. So all you're doing is you're putting a plan together. You're looking at your money amounts, how much you have, how much you need. You're looking at your um, time to money. So you're calculating how much time do you have to need this money, um, your timeline and it's so important uh, forecasting when we talk about money forecasting is because you want to get the results that you want, right? You want your lifestyle to change. You don't want to live the same life year after year after year after year. And then you look up it's five it's 10 years later and you still don't have a house. You know, you still don't have a car. You don't have a new car or you still haven't taken the kids on a vacation or you haven't gone back to school or whatever it is. That's not the type of life you want. And so forecasting is going to help you reach those milestones, hit those money goals and um, elevate from there. OK, now the thing with money with money forecasting is it's never going to be 100 percent accurate. You can get it super close, but it's never going to be 100 percent accurate. Um, if done correctly, it should not take a lot of time. It should be something that's very simple to do, very easy to do, very quick. And um, it's assumptions based, right? So you're assuming if nothing changes, what happens? If my income change uh, doesn't change, if my income stays the same, what's going to happen? Um, if I don't lose my job, if I if my business doesn't grow, um, if, if none of my expenses changes, what does that look like? What's going to happen? Now, if you do it right, you can absolutely live the life that you want, right? Especially if you have those big money goals that you're trying to accomplish, you most certainly can live the life that you want to live. OK, so how do you forecast? What does that look like? The first thing to forecasting is you have to know your numbers. OK, so you have to know your income, your expenses, those one off charges or those one off things that you have to pay for every blue moon. Um, important dates. You got to know events that are coming up, how much those are going to cost. You have to know your number. Um, that I talk about a lot, which is your monthly number that it takes for you to live and to survive and run your household. You need to know all of that when you're starting this forecasting journey. The the more you know, the easier your forecasting journey will be because you'll have everything that you need to get started and to be successful. OK, the second thing is thank you, Tash. Tash said money forecasting is so important, very, very valuable information. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
The second thing that you have to know when forecasting are your factors. Okay, so you have money factors. I'm talking about your pay schedule, um, how much your checks are on average, if what your tax liability is, if you normally owe taxes and what that looks like. You have seasonal factors. So you have like holidays, birthdays, graduations, big events that are coming up. Um, summertime, summer break, if you have kids, that's another seasonal factor. You have personal factors, right? So what is your money personality? How do you like to spend? What are some things that you need to live your life and um, expenses that you may have on a personal level? That can look like medications, that could look like facials every month, that can look like, you know, if you need a special deodorant or a special insole every year, you know, with those personal factors are going to impact your forecasting and then historical factors. So what happened last year? What happened two years ago? Um, example, home repair. So if you know every two to three years, um, you, you have to get your tree trim, that huge tree in your backyard, that's a historical factor that you need to take into account when you're forecasting your money. The third thing that you have to look at when you're forecasting is your categories, okay? So what's important to you? Um, do you love to travel, right? Some people live to travel. They work to travel. That's what they do. Um, do you want your kids to live in a good school district? Do you like luxury? That looks like spa dates, you know, luxury items, you know, things that you buy at Neiman Marcus. What categories are most important to you? That's going to impact your forecasting as well because that goes into your day-to-day -day spending and what your paycheck um, looks like when you spend it okay fourth is more or less right so this is going to be based on your lifestyle what can you do less of what can you do more of can you work more hours to make more money can you cut back on this category can you cut back on this expense what factors can you cut out are you not gonna do uh, Christmas this year so those are all things that you have to consider when you're talking about more or less what can I do more of financially what can I do less of financially that's not gonna hurt too bad that's not gonna make a, a, a huge negative impact but the, the, but that's gonna make a huge positive impact okay and then five is budget for success you guys know I love a good budget okay um, budgeting is my absolute baby I love to budget and so what you, you're doing when you're when we're talking about your budgeting when it comes to forecasting is ideally what should you be able to do right are you gonna put this into practice because your budgeting and your ability to budget successfully is what's gonna help with your forecast It's good it's what's gonna help change the trajectory of your financial life okay and then six is track and pivot so most people might might forecast right but they don't track it and they don't pivot so anytime you're trying to forecast or you're trying to reach a goal you have to track that goal so that you know where you stand right and you have to do that pretty regularly and then if you're off track you have to be savvy enough you have to be insightful enough you have to be disciplined enough to pivot that plan okay that's easier said than done. It's simple, but it's not easy. And I say that all the time because a lot of times with money is simple, but it's not easy because it takes discipline. OK, so that's number six is to track and pivot. Now, I'm going to give you a couple examples of what this looks like to forecast. Let's say you want to take a vacation to Bora Bora for Christmas. OK, and the trip to Bora Bora is going to cost ten thousand dollars. So the first thing is, you know, your numbers, you know, how much income you come, have coming in, you know, how much income you go, you have excuse me, how many expenses you have going out. So let's say you're bringing in about $5,000 a month, you're making up somewhere about 60, maybe $72,000 uh, before after tax, before tax. Excuse me. So you know your numbers, you know your factors, you know your pay schedule, you know, you know what holidays coming up, you know Christmas is coming up, so I have to buy my mom a gift that's going to be about $150 to $200. You know what your money personality is. Um, you know historically, let's say that you need to get your tree trimmed every December and that's going to cost a thousand dollars or your furnace is going to go out or you need to going to have you're going to have to have a furnace repair every Christmas that's a thousand dollars whatever it is you know your categories you know what's important to you more or less where can you cut what where can you do what can you do more of and then you're budgeting for success so if you take all these factors into account you can forecast that okay I have about 10 pay periods to the end of the year I already have let's say five thousand dollars saved up so that means that I need to find another $5,000 for my trip. Um, where can I pull that from, right? $5,000 over 10 pay periods looks like about $500 per pay period. So you say, okay, hmm, can I, can I afford $500 for the next 10 pay periods? No, I can't afford $500 for the next 10 pay periods. But if I do blank with my side hustle, I can bring in another thousand. If I do blank with my... Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> if I do blank with my, you know, job, maybe I can work more hours. Maybe I have overtime. Maybe I could pick up some extra shifts. I know that's another thousand dollars. So building that all into your forecast, you can say, OK, this is doable. I can do this. And this is how I'm going to do it. You will lay that plan out into your budget. So I know um, in the, the next week's pay period, 728, I think it is, or this week, 728 or 718, whatever it is, the last paycheck of this month, um, I can do $500 and I can do that, so on and so forth. So that's what forecasting looks like. Now, let me give you another example. Before I get into that example, let me say this. When you forecast properly, there is no scrambling for back to school. There is no scrambling for Christmas. There is no scrambling, scrambling for emergencies because you know these, these things are coming, right? And you're planning for it. So it's going to be way easier to hit a $1,000 goal or a $10,000 goal or a $5,000 goal when you have been forecasting over the previous 12 months, over the previous six months, than it is going to be for that thing at that one month right it's going to be easier for you to say okay i need a thousand dollars next week if you've been forecasting if you've been forecasting your savings and say okay i know i want five thousand dollars in my savings by the end of the year that's going to be much easier okay okay now i'll give you another example let's talk about back to school kids if you have children they go back to school every single year like it should not be a surprise for you they're going back to school they typically go back to school at the end of august okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to know your numbers. How much income do you have? How much expenses do you have going out? How many pay periods do you have until then? Let's say you have about three pay periods. Um, you want to know those seasonal factors. So back to school is a seasonal factor. Um, you have to look at your categories. OK, so the kids are at home. They're eating everything up that they see. They want to snack every five minutes. <laughs> so I know I can't cut my full bu budget, but oh, I can work from home three days a week. So I can maybe cut my gas budget. So those are your categories. What can we do more of less of? OK, so uh, we can do more, you know, staying in, doing maybe staycation activities, doing cheaper activities for entertainment. Those are some ways that we can do more or less. And then how can I budget for success? So we have one more paycheck in July and then two paychecks in August before the kids go back to school. If you have three kids and it costs about five hundred dollars um, per kid for everything they need, their school clothes, their shoes, their school supplies and all that good stuff. You can start planning for that now. So we're forecasting, right? So some of the things that you can be, do, be doing while you're forecasting is buying uniforms now. If you know kids, your kids need uniforms, start buying them now while they're super cheap. Um, back to school events. Look up what who in your area is having back to school events. One of my Facebook friends, she's on here now, Tash, um, Tashina Calhoun. She has a, a back to school event. They're going to be popping up everywhere. So start doing your research. Um, school supply drive, same thing. Um, forecasting, tapping family and friends. Years ago, when we had a bunch of little kids in our family, I would cover their school supplies. I'd say, okay, you know, my sister or my cousin or whoever, I'm going to cover their school supplies this year. So that may be an option. Um, you can sell something. So we're forecasting. We're thinking about what do I need to make sure I have this $1,500 next month for these kids when they return to school. Okay. And then six, you're going to track it. So for the next three pay periods, you have to make sure you're saving this money, you're putting this money aside. Or you're using it on items that um, are for back to school, right? So although each kid needs about $500 every week, maybe you spend about $10, $25, $30 on, you know, school supplies or whatever. Maybe you run across some um, back to school shoes and they're on sale. So you get those now. So we're forecasting, okay? Um, and then the pivot for number six, if you know that you're not going to have it or you need help or you need assistance, refer back to those back to school events. Tap into those rich aunties, ask people for help. There are churches that do back to school drives. It's so much help that's going to be coming up in the next month that you can utilize, that you can tap into so that this back to school event can be successful for your kiddos. OK, so those are just two examples of how you forecast. When I tell you that forecasting will change the trajectory of your life, it will. Start thinking about what your life looks like in the next six months, in the next year, especially if, especially if there are huge things that you want to do, especially if there are milestones that you want to hit so that we can start knocking those money goals off and we won't live the same life over and over and over every single year. OK, Carla commented, she said, ask early. That's absolutely true, um, especially for the back to school example. Not so much for Bora Bora, but for the back to school example, don't wait until the Friday before back to school. School starts on Monday and you're calling somebody asking them for help. If you need help, 
ask early so that people can start tapping in and they can start forecasting and figuring out, okay, how can I help so-and-so with this? She needs this. The kids need that. Whatever it is, you can start um, getting the help you need. Okay, so that's it. That's forecasting. Money forecasting is super easy. Once you get in the habit of doing it, it becomes like a second thing to you. You can forecast anything. You know, I can you can forecast a new Tesla if that's what you want by the end of the year or next year, whatever it is, you can start for, forecasting and figure out figuring out what your life looks like when you forecast how much income you need to do that, how you need to cut your expenses to be able to do X, Y and Z. OK, I love you guys. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this Money Monday. As always, please like and share and comment. If you have any ideas, any feedback, let me know. I'd love to hear those. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good night.